Hey everyone, today's video is going to be a little bit different, but today I wanted to show you what it looks like to have a large language model or multiple different versions of large language models running at home on your own personal computer. Now as a, a forewarning, this is not the greatest technology. This isn't going to be mind-blowing. This certainly isn't ChatGPT, but it is something. Now, I wanted to do a full tutorial here, but the truth is I don't trust that I could deliver instructions that are going to work for everybody. I kind of feel like I barely got this working. The good news is there's a lot of different install options, so if something doesn't work, there's a good chance something else might. In my research after the replica story, I found out about this GitHub repository by Uba Booga. And this developer seems to want to be the automatic 1111 of this world. If what you just saw looks in any way similar to Stable Diffusion, it's because they both use Gradio. There's a couple of similarities. If you're planning on installing this yourself, there are one-click installers for both Linux and for Windows. I personally opted for a Conda approach simply because I already had Conda installed, but I really couldn't tell you if that gave me any advantages or disadvantages. The biggest thing to warn you about before you really get started with this and before you download any models is the amount of video RAM that you have access to is going to be critical. There's going to be massive limitations on what you're able to run due to the amount of video RAM that you have. I'm going to link to some charts and some information I found via the GitHub, but I would definitely encourage you to go through the discussions and the issues and things like that if you were to encounter any problems. If you're still on the fence as to whether or not this is worth the effort, let me show you what some of these models are capable of and you can decide for yourself. What you'll see really quickly is their usefulness is based on what they were trained on. Some are academic in nature, trained on questions and answers. Some are informational. Some are based on novels and chat. As you explore through these different options, you may or may not find something that meets your needs. The service itself runs as a server, and Gradio functions as a web UI in the exact same way a lot of us are already familiar with with Stable Diffusion. Since each model kind of requires different input, the setup doesn't exactly change perfectly for each individual model. A lot of this stuff is very much brand new and being worked on as we speak, so a lot of things are very much subject to change, I would imagine, but it does already support a chat interface as well as a more standard question and answer type of interface. I would imagine, just like Stable Diffusion, that you're really only going to see compatibility with NVIDIA GPUs, but I did see a note that it works on Google Collab, so those of you who really want to try it out who don't have that type of video machine at home, you still have that option. The biggest issue myself that I had to overcome is because I'm working on Windows, and because this 8-bit mode wasn't originally working, there were a couple of DLL files that I had to follow a series of instructions and install those a little bit more specifically to make it work for me. I highly, highly recommend the 8-bit mode because it saves you a ton of video RAM, which is a very big deal when you're actually trying to use this stuff. There was certainly a lot of trial and error on my part, probably mostly because I didn't do the one-click installer. Hopefully your install goes easier than mine did. But let's talk about what happens after everything does work correctly and you finally get it working. I would say out of the models that I tried, the ones that I downloaded, Pygmalion was the one that was probably the most entertaining, so that's the one that I'll show you here. And as it stands right now, you don't have a ton of different options. This isn't exactly novel AI with the level of control and the amount of context tools that you have, but I'm hoping soon they're going to add more and more of that, and more in terms of extensions and things along those lines. But still, there's going to be people who have been spoiled already by the massive output that they're expecting to see from something like ChatGPT. And that's just simply not possible at this point on a personal computer. And processing at that scale is just really not going to happen at home just yet. For however much extra video RAM we have to spare, we can increase the amount of tokens, and we can increase the number of generation attempts as well. With some coding magic behind the scenes going on, I'm sure, we do end up with a couple more extra sentences and what seems like some coherent output. When you choose to launch the server in this chat mode, it would seem a lot of work has been done to try to keep things more coherent. So that's very promising, especially for any of those replica refugees or things of that nature. If you're asking yourself, Frank, how did you trap your consciousness into the machine like this? Well, hold your horses. I'm gonna show you in just a moment as we explore some character creation tools that also happened across. As far as I can tell, this really only applies to Pygmalion, but this throws together a JSON file for you, which gives your character background context. And this is how the program gives the character a sort of contextual relevancy. Working with a large language model, there's going to be a certain amount of information that it can take in and a certain amount of information that it's capable of putting out. And both are going to be limited by hardware. When you're chatting with the bot, you're not just sending the most recent line of text. You're sending the entire conversation plus the most recent line of text. And that gives the bot fresh context for the conversation and a better idea of how to respond. That's how this sort of stuff works. So creating these JSON files, plus adding a little profile picture and things of that nature, 
can sort of breathe life into what would otherwise be a very lifeless character without any real sense of personality. If you have a long enough conversation, eventually this initial context might be replaced completely, but this is your starting position. One of the things I loved right off the bat about this particular project was that it did make a number of things easier. One of those things is finding and downloading models. This ships to you with a Python script referred to as download-model.py, which means you don't have to search through Hugging Face or GitHub. I've also already noticed a massive attempt to try to keep up with the brand new leaks and newest technology and things that are coming out. So Facebook's Llama, for example, which was just announced and just leaked, is already supported, from what I understand. I don't know if I qualify with the academic credentials or whatever would be required, but if I get a chance to check it out, I'll try to share that here for you guys as well. When it comes to the interface itself, there's obviously a lot of room for improvement as it's still a very brand new thing. But a lot of the features are way more convenient here than you might actually realize. Being able to switch models on the fly and having presets ready to go is the next step towards essentially emulating what Novel AI has. And the longer I played with this, the more I realized that that's actually what they've built, is a very similar thing to this, just very beefed up. Now, I'm sure comparatively, they're very different models and a very different system, and there's probably a lot more systems going to work that increase the speed of their systems. But for something running for free at home, this really isn't terrible. And if this is just another first look into what the future might look more and more like, we can look forward to smaller models, faster video cards, more capable computers. So the idea that this is going to be even easier and easier to do over time and that we'll have more and more options, it's a very real possibility. And that's why I love looking at stuff like this, even if this isn't the most useful thing to use on the day to day. But having access to it from my own machine kind of opens up some possibilities. So I asked myself, what could I use this for on the day to day? And as just a demonstration of this technology, how it works and how easily it can be integrated into other things, I was able to throw together a program practically overnight to turn this output into a Discord chatbot for my own personal Discord. So very briefly, I'll introduce you to Tankbot, who is largely inappropriate, who takes up all of my video RAM. I can't really afford to just keep him running, but I was very proud for how quickly this all was able to come together and how useful it seemed to be. And it really just gives you a better sense of what could be possible in the future. For those of you who made it to this point, I really do hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you did find it useful, even though I wasn't able to give you really tangible install instructions or anything like that. There's going to be links in the description, and I want to try to share as much as I can to make sure that people don't have such a hard time getting this installed if they try to. It was a little frustrating, but I did find it to be worthwhile. Regardless, I do always appreciate those of you who made it to the end of the video. Like, comment, subscribe, all that fun YouTube algorithm stuff. And as always, thanks for watching.